A shocking hotel quarantine stuff up that's putting lives at risk. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Lorian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article written by Ali Foster for news.com.au discussing, frankly, a very shocking, shocking example of utter incompetence coming from the Victorian hotel quarantines. This is just an utter joke. A viewer sent this to me and I warned them, I warned them, this may turn into a rant. And they said, fantastic, I love it when you get angry. But they were a medical student. They were just, just really, really pissed about what they're seeing here. Really frustrated. Really worried. Now, in Victoria, test, uh, testing stuff up put hundreds in hotel quarantine at risk of infection, of HIV infection. More than 200 people who underwent hotel quarantine in Victoria must now get tested for HIV and other viruses after a major stuff up. This isn't just the stuff up, Ali. This is a complete and utter just debacle. The Victorian government has just stuffed this up. Wait till you see what happened, because it, it is a joke. It is a joke. Think about it. You go in there, and there are probably people thinking they're doing the right thing. You know, okay, you know, the government is taking care of me. They'll, they'll put me in quarantine. They'll protect me. I'll, I, I'm at risk of spreading this to other people. Doing the right thing. Or they were forced there. One way or another, it doesn't matter. And you can see here what's happened. You can see what's happened. More than 200 people who underwent hotel quarantine in Victoria have been urged to go get tested for HIV and other viruses after a testing stuff-up resulted in possible cross-contamination. Safer care, Victoria. I mean, how would you feel if you went through this? And you were fine. You probably didn't even have it. And then you got another illness because of the government. How would you feel, everyone? Safer Care Victoria announced yesterday that 243 people who underwent blood glucose level tests while in coronavirus hotel quarantine between the 29th of March and August 20 could be at risk of contracting a blood-borne virus after the same test was used on multiple people. Now, I, I have a blood glucose checker right here. Right here. We've got several in our own house. Rachel has her own. Because what happens is, you stab yourself with this thing, get a little tiny drop of blood, and you put it on a little detector strip, like you can see there, and the machine reads it. I, I recommend, I recommend everyone does this. Every single person, for one really simple reason. Because you want to check if you're pre-diabetic. So I did, tomorrow I was below 5.5. Oh, no, I was at 5.5 here milliballs per liter so i'm at the healthy level which is fantastic but you have a lot of people that are skinny that could be pre-diabetic and not even realize it and that's kind of a wake-up call to a lot of people so get these things and do it that's fantastic but then you'll realize oh wait a minute there's a potential risk for contamination so maybe different members of the family should get their own device this isn't rocket science, but this is what happens when you get security guards from companies that hire using social justice and political purposes that are getting, you know, uh, bonuses and other, other things to, to be put ahead. Administering medical tests. Sure, these are not complicated tests. These are bloody simple. A kid can do it. But uh, are you going to replace the needle every time? It's a, it, it has a, a risk of contamination. Sure, it's, it's very low, but there's still a risk. These are medical procedures. There's a reason why. You, you think this is a quarantine. This entire operation should be run with an understanding of, of health and medicine. You know, we saw all the movies, you know, where the big, the plague and everything, and they had all the, these super decked out, you know, quarantine zones and people wearing all the stuff. Now, nah, here in Australia, we just, we just hire a bunch of low-wage bloody security guards with a diversity quota tick on their bloody business. Oh yeah, they'll be right, mate. And half of them end up sleeping with the bloody people they're quarantining. Bloody Australia. Bloody Victoria. 
Again, again, the most socialist state in the country is the biggest, biggest stuff up, biggest shit up. That's what it is. Blood glucose level testing devices intended for use by one person were used across multiple residents. Safe Care Victoria said in a statement. So let's have a look at these statements. So if we jump here, review launched into blood glucose monitoring in mandatory quarantine. Now, one of the reasons why they want to monitor it is because well, if you're a diabetic or if you're pre-diabetic, that that's a comorbidity. Diabetes is a comorbidity. Obesity is a comorbidity. And don't just think you're only going to get diabetes if you're obese, everyone. Thin people can get it too. So, people who may have had their blood glucose levels tested while in quarantine accommodation are being contacted to undergo precautionary screening due to the potential risk of cross-contamination and infection. So, were they given a choice? Were they given a choice to undergo this? Or was it mandatory testing? Or they'll pro probably like the other stuff. They'll say, oh, well, well actually, no, uh, you'll have another 24 days. Right, right now, if you are in Victoria... If you're a close contact person, you need to go into quarantine. And if you refuse to get tested, they have to keep you there for a month at your cost. 24 days at your cost. And I'm only making the assumption that they're doing it to, to detect for potential comorbidities. That's, that's just completely a guess. It may be completely wrong. It may be completely wrong. I mean, they can't even train their security guards to administer a simple medical test in a quarantine. A quarantine designed to keep people healthy. They can't ensure that the people that they're protecting or that they're quarantining are not going to infect each other due to incompetence. We're not talking something complicated here, guys. You don't need to go do a course to do it. You just write a name on someone, you check it, you put it in their room. You give it to them. You give each person there. Here you go. Here's your free monitor. Monitor yourself every day, please. We want to check for this, 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 and this. Oh, look, it has other health benefits. Done. They give you these bloody things for free at the chemist because they make their money on the bloody thing. You know, you go like me, you get a keto measurer, and that's one buck fifty a pop. I wish I could buy shares in it. Safe, ca Safe Care Victoria is, as of this morning, contacting 243 people who had a blood glucose level test between the 29th of March and 20th of August based on information in their health records. What was only one test? As a precaution, contact will also be made to those who had conditions or episodes that may have required the test. If people are concerned they had this test and have not, not, yet, been, not yet been contacted, they can call the dedicated patient line on one 800 Three five six zero six one eight a.m. to eight p.m. seven days a week. Interpreters are available on request. I'm in bloody hell. I'm on a completely unrelated topic. You, to participate in this democracy, you should speak the language. You should speak the primary language. And this is coming from a first generation Australian of an immigrant who couldn't speak the language till he came over here. You know what he did? My father. He learnt the language. It's not that hard. Blood, well, no, it probably is that hard for some... Uh, anyway. Blood glucose level testing devices intended for use by one person were used across multiple residents. This presents a low clinical risk of cr cross-contamination and blood-borne viruses, Hep B, C, and HIV. But it does pose a risk, everyone. That's being forced on people, which could be addressed very, very cheaply. The clinical risk of infection is low. However, for reassurance, access to confidential testing will be arranged. There is no risk of people who do not have a blood glucose level test. Well, actually, actually, no, you're wrong. Well, I don't know. What if you caught HIV during that time? How long would, How long is the, uh, the uh, period before HIV can contaminate other people if you've been infected? Uh, I don't know anymore. It's the 80, you know, in the 80s. There is no risk to those who used their own personal devices to test their blood glucose level, well, of course. There is no ongoing risk to people currently in COVID-19 accommodation as the devices were removed in August. I mean, how often did they reuse these things? There is no risk that this could have spread the coronavirus as it is not, as it is not transmittable by blood. Who cares about the coronavirus? I'd be more worried about getting Hep B, C or HIV. 
A blood glucose level test, also known as a finger prick test, involves a finger prick to get a drop of blood. The testing device in question was designed for repeat use by one person, not multiple people. The needles can be changed between use, but the body of the device retain microscopic amounts of blood. These devices are mostly used to test blood, blood glucose levels in people with diabetes. However, most people with diabetes will have their own device and would not have required to a test by a nurse or a doctor during quarantine. The test may also be used for pregnant women who have who fainted or people who are generally unwell. See, I, I would suggest everyone uses that test. But then again, I'm concerned about insulation, resi uh, insulation, insulin resistance and becoming pre-diabetic as I approach middle age. Which, if you catch it early enough, you can address it with diet, everyone. While the immediate concern is for the health of former quarantine accommodation residents, Safe Care Victoria will also examine what happened and why and make recommendations for system improvements. Well, I can tell you what happened. You hired dumb shit security guards who have got no idea what they're doing. You chucked them in the deep end. You didn't give them any training. You know, I, I feel sorry for these guys. They're going to be blamed for this. How guilty would they feel? And it's probably not their fault at all. You know, it's just the government trying to, you know, save some money or do it on the cheap or, you know, not lose face. So, I mean, we've got some of the quotes here. Right now, now we won't be able to answer the many questions people have about how this happened. Be assured that Safe OK Victoria is conducting a full review into how and why these devices came to be used. Well, that's fine. I mean, Victoria, no one knows what happens anytime. Anytime. It'll just get ignored. You know, oh, no, it wasn't me. Everyone will put their hands up going, no, it wasn't me. And people could be at risk of contracting illnesses that can have a very significant impact on their lives. Fantastic. And here's the... Here's the uh, test that they're doing. So... We're now contacting everyone who may have had their blood glucose level tested. We want to make sure we've identified everyone. So if you think you've had this test and haven't been contacted, please call us. While we're doing this, you could the risk is low, but you could get Hep B, C, or HIV. Okay. Review this. Reviewing how this has happened and why. Uh, well, it's just utter incompetence, guys. You, you've stuffed it up. You've stuffed it up. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, this presents a low clinical risk of cross-contamination and blood-borne viruses, Hep B, C, and HIV. Blood glucose level test involves pricking the finger to get a drop of blood used in the device. So, I mean, we'll go through here. We've already read all of this in the article. Former Labor, Labor leader Bill Shorten weighed in on Victoria's latest quarantine stuff-up. Speaking on the Today Show on Tuesday, Mr. Shorten said the mistakes occurred in Victoria are not good enough. What's well, good? Good that Labour is attacking a process implemented by Andrews. Mr. Shorten said, This was a timely reminder that people still needed to keep our guard up against the old nasties we know about. It must be really stressful and worrying for the people who have gone through this. I hope they can get the test results back as quickly as possible, he said. I mean, I'm, I, am, I, I would be confident... Well, no, I wouldn't be. I'd hope, I'd hope that no one has gotten infected by this. I would really hope nothing's happened. We won't hear about it. We won't hear about it. But it shows you, do you trust these poops, guys? Do you trust them? Health Minister Martin Forley addressed the testing s stuff up at a press conference this morning, clarifying that the needles used in the test were changed between each use of the device... But the, uh, but the device was not changed, despite it being meant for repeated use by one person, not multiple people. Okay, so that significantly reduces the risk. I need to stress that this is, according to all the clinical advice, a very, very low risk of cross-contamination. But, out of abundance of caution, Safe Care Victoria and the Alfred Hospital, Hospital are doing precisely the right thing in a very risk-averse way of seeking people to contact all the people involved. He said there is still no evidence of anyone picking up bloodborne viruses as a result of the mistake. But you've got to understand, everyone, these things are so cheap. They are so cheap. 250 people. 250 people, you could have issued it to them. You could issued it to them by themselves. 
directly, got them to administer it. It would have ongoing health benefits. It just, just shows you. Maybe it wasn't the security guards. Maybe it was medical people brought in. What's worse? What would be worse, actually? A security guard dr doing it. Because that, that hasn't been mentioned anywhere. I just assumed, and that's what the, the reviewer told me. Although the person who sent me the article as well. What's worse? Security guard stuffing it up or medical practitioners stuffing it up? What do you think, guys? Are you surprised at all? As always, let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch at Heiser Says, use Gold Pass at the Perth Mint, or support us by PayPal. Take care, guys. I'll see you all next time.